was hoping you're gonna give me like a. We're rolling. <laughs> you're good. You're good to go. We're back. We're live. Studio. 89, still testing it out. I think Studio 89 is still. I know Charlie wanted Studio 89 22, but Jason's had a lot of different numbers. I'll, we'll te- tease it, but keep going. We'll tease it. <laughs> it's a big day for us, and uh, the gentleman that we have here is a Syracuse native and a major league all star yeah. pitcher for the, for the Pittsburgh Pirates, Jason Grilly, Mound Visit, Episode 1. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Absolutely. Jason, welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. It's always good to talk. Uh, it's been a long talk this morning, a long coffee talk. <laughs> Already getting some tech issues out of the way. Um, you guys look a little blurry, but maybe that's because my coffee hasn't set in. And I, <laughs> I get asked, what the hell is the number 89? What? What? Why 89? Well, so, so Justin, you wore number eight in that's your correct. playing days. I wore number nine in my playing days. So we just figured we combine both of them, make it studio it. 80. Fair enough. Uh, we're, at, we're, still, we're still workshopping everything. So yeah, that's okay. Uh, it's good to be on the show guys. Uh, you know, here in Pittsburgh, I'm South. I moved South from Syracuse. Yeah. A little bit less snow. That's all. Was, that's all it means. Yeah. I was going to say, is it silk? Is it cold there right now? Because it is. Cold. It's, okay. Okay. It's so you're, yeah. Bushy, but the sun's out now and, um, a good thing you know and we're we're getting close to baseball season it's amazing how already uh high school practices and all these affiliates are, are getting the kids going again i know my son himself been working out with his personal trainer uh i think that's the secret sauce a lot of these people want to do all this metrics testing which we do and encourage but i uh i know you always got to get back to the basics you got to actually do the physical exercises and, and get out there and that's what we encourage by showing these kids what to expose themselves to and you know i know what it took uh just to get ready for a day we were talking to case a little bit before uh we went on live here that um you know what's it like right what do you have to do and i'm just, now that i'm fifth year retirement just the intensity of you know just a regular Three, five years out yeah how about that right it goes quick <laughs> 10 wow. years this year, 10 years removed from 2013, the big Cueto game here in Pittsburgh against the Reds. Wow. Cueto. So I'm hoping, I'm, I'm kind of teasing it, but I, I think they're they're jamming on uh, putting the band deck together and having a little reunion October 1st. All so right. that AJ Burnett, who encouraged the blackout for us to wear our black jerseys. Russ we have Martin. an AJ Burnett uh, We do have an AJ Burnett bobblehead somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, I gave you all my uh, all my old swag, and I'm trying to clean out my locker like Kenny Powers after you're done playing. There you go. After we're after we're done playing, there's just so many things like I don't have enough room in my house. Like uh, George Carlin said, uh, "Why do you buy a bigger house? Because you buy a bigger house because you have all this stuff, and it doesn't fit in your house that you live in. So you buy a bigger house. Why to put more stuff in it?" <laughs> I'm glad to give some of my stuff to Studio 89, so I guess I can take. Uh, <laughs> some it does sound good. Eight over it's there. To... It rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? It does. Man. All right, Grill. Listen, man. Why, why don't you tell the good people out there about you coming through in Syracuse? We had Charlie Lockwood on yesterday, or two days ago, yeah. with Locked and Loaded with Charlie Lockwood. Tell us a little bit about you going through high school up here, Ballinsville High School, uh, and and making your way into college. And the the things that you had to do, you told stories about, you know, practicing in your basement and things that, uh, because Charlie was telling us to make himself a better all-around player, he started working on his left hand. Doing everything with his left hand. Doing everything with his left hand. doors, yeah. So can you tell us a little bit, especially for the kids out there that are going to be watching this podcast, from an all-star, what are the things that they have to do at a young age going through uh, that you did to make yourself a better player? Well, first of all, I didn't play lacrosse. I can't believe the first guest was lacrosse. <laughs> but, so it's going to be a back and forth thing with, with you know lacrosse. <laughs> but they were my Cobra Kai, and uh, <laughs> in in Syracuse, upstate New York, uh, for obvious reasons. I mean. Great lacrosse program. I say that kiddingly. I love lacrosse now, right? I love it. Um, 
because it's one of the sports that we, we facilitate. It's growing pretty fast as well. Um, it's great for kids that, you know, it's, it's hard. There's a big drop off in baseball after little league. Um, when you hit the big diamond, it's, it's a big boy game. And a lot of people don't, they can't mentally handle that. So I think that's why they pick up a different sport or or maybe an instrument. I don't know, um, to each his own, but what I had to do back in the day, we didn't have any of these big bubbles or astroturfed facilities and cages and, uh, clinics that that all these kids i mean baseball has gotten better which i love i mean i got to borrow it at a very raw and early stage and i borrowed it at a time it was better than even what my dad uh passed on the baton to so uh you know when you love and respect the game uh you give it give it to the next generation who wants to love and respect it as well and you hope that they take take good care of it you know um I did, and it started started to stem for me. I love my dad. My dad's one of my best friends. Is my best friend, and he just happened. I tell people he was just happened to be my uh, my dad as well. And he used to be he used to be a ball player. So there was a bag underneath my basement stairs. It was my dad's old from his years. It just had his old pa- baseball pants, old Wilson gloves that actually said "Made in the USA." How about wow. that? Yeah, uh, so those are worth some money. I have my still my first club. I think here it is. Hang on, let me let me grab yeah, it. Grab it. Let's see it. <laughs> we'll show and tell. I was, but that was actually my uh, my first glove. Uh, well, my first yeah. nice nice glove was a David Wright Wilson model, and this I still have first, that thing. This was my first Wilson glove. Look at that. See, made yeah, in the. Yeah, it's a relic. About <laughs> that, we actually did something great once in a while. Uh, our all American sport, right there. Wow. Yep. Look so at that. look at the pocket you had on that thing, right? It's been restructured, yeah. uh, but this was real. No offense, ma'am, but it looks like I thought you were gonna bring out the old glove where it's the individual finger pockets. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> You'll catch me. Don't worry. Uh, no, I will not. You know, oh, I know. I, I thought that that Studio eighty nine was because you guys were born in eighty nine or something like that. But <laughs> close, close, right? Yeah, a couple years off for me, but yeah, I think. Uh, Say that, what Charlie were doing back in nineteen eighty nine when you guys <laughs> thought that yeah. was a big league uh, oil spot there on that glove too. Hey, look, that? yes. that's, I mean, yes. that's how it's done right there. Shaving cream, kids, don't put Is that. that- the oil I use that's old school barbasol that cheap you can get wow. at the dollar store shaving cream yeah. to keep the leather because if that all some of that oil it really weighs your glove down if that matters to you I don't know thoughts um, on this is a tangent a little bit of a glove tangent but thoughts on people because this has been a wave recently I'm completely against it I never did it because I thought it you talk about integrity of the game this goes against it completely people would put their gloves in a microwave or an oven yeah. To like loosen the leather thoughts on that rubber because band. I think yeah, I well the, the rubber kid. band is one thing but no just for a minute or two it, it does help oh, you th- oh okay yeah. no it's this uh is why I didn't make the major leagues I guess this no is just ship. just for a minute or two and you know don't put your hand in it right after <laughs> you get in there you melt yourself uh, yeah but no just like I said I found this glove uh, was given to me obviously by by Steve Grilly the original cheese man and it was underneath. You know, I would go down in the basement, throw the ball against the wall, um, drive my parents crazy. I just nailed a blanket to the top beam, hitting off of a tee and any de- hitting device I could, just anything to be in it. And then taking breaks, I collected baseball cards, anything I could do to be submerged. Uh, they say to be an outlier, right? You uh, And I don't know if people know what that even is. An outlier is just being exposed to something. And more hours, they say 10,000 hours it takes to, to yeah. be around anything and to make yourself great, submerging yourself into that world. So a by osmosis, being around clubhouses, picking my dad up when I was an early age, uh, and that's how we settled in Syracuse. He wound up with the Blue Jays organization at the tail end of his career and uh, opened up the change of pace Sports bar, which I can't believe, Justin. There's gonna be a lot of tangents I in this. I exposed story. you a little bit, Justin. I'm sorry. You have not brought Casey to the change of pace for chicken wings. We we gotta like warm them up. <laughs> you know, we can't just do it at once. Today, today's lunch has been brought to you by Change of Pace Chicken <laughs> on the planet. That's right. And you guys are in Syracuse. Check it out. You, um, you know what's amazing to me with 
what he was saying about what he did in his basement yeah. and hanging up a curtain. Yeah. You know, it just makes me think of today's day and age, the youth. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to say spoiled because I think that's a that's not a very good term to use. But I feel like they have more of an opportunity to yeah, get there's better. There's so many tools for them. stuff at their disposal, I guess, yep. for lack of a well, better term. Well, them, though, I mean, I get overwhelmed with Netflix, what to watch. And because there's so much stuff. I never pick. I always just, <laughs> I never know what to Yeah, but that's the same thing. I mean, I bought, you kidding me? I, you know how much tools and, and things? We just went to the ABCA conference. Yeah. You know, stuff was there. And I brought a ton of stuff home, o- overpaid for lo- heavy baggage. Uh, because I brought all these tools back. Will they use them all? No. You know, what does it take? It takes going out there, figuring out a routine, establish a routine. So you asked what I did. I'm going to bring it back, guys, because I know we're going way back. And uh, foul ball, we're bringing it back. We're going to reuse that ball. Uh, I just kept working. I mean, I worked in the basement. I did little things. I was always in my room while I was studying or... Um, whatever, just, or if I saw a reflection in the window, reflection in the mirror, I was constantly doing things in between commercial breaks. I would stand up and just work on my, my, you know, lifting my leg and my balance position. When we had VHS, I didn't have split screen. I would record Nolan Ryan and Roger Clemens videos. And I thought I was doing, uh, that had the world at my fingertips with the technology because we had two VHS machines and two TVs right in the middle of my living room and family room. And I would record them and I'd watch, I'd try to pick up things, you know? So I was always a student of the game. Um, and again, whatever tools were exposed, I was exposed to. And luckily my dad had a key to the MacArthur stadium and, and, uh, he still know, has that key. He still has that key. Yeah. Yeah. Parking lot. Yes. Uh, but the, even the new stadium, um, just having access to the tunnel down there. It's, it, again, being an outlier, what you're exposing yourself to. Kids that want to be there are going to be there. And, again, it's not trying to spend eight hours hitting till your hands are bleeding. It's just, just like guitar. I'm trying to learn guitar. And it's just a little bit consistently throughout the day um, that I just constantly expose myself to. And I was always with a ball in my hand, just constantly – throwing it around, but I think working at the change of pace and cutting celery, making pizzas made me go, dad, I really want to learn that breaking ball. Teach me. <laughs> Cause, uh, yeah. Being in the restaurant business is a grinder, uh, occupation. Mm-hmm. And that made me respect, you know, and want to work harder at a dream of mine that I was what, able to make and turn into a career. What, what was that moment for you? when you knew you had something, you know, internally, mentally, you're like, I can do this. I got some good stuff. I'm going to make the commitment. Uh, well, if you saw the karate kid, I was kind of looked like Ralph Macho, but maybe even a lot skinnier than him. So and that's, that, that's two karate kid. Two karate kid references. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cobra Kai, lacrosse. <laughs> And I was just this, you know, I mean, I, I swear to God, I know you showed a picture of Charlie in high school. I'm embarrassed to show you a picture of me. Yeah, you're going to need that. Them. We need you got to send those our way. So it, it, I would out sit now eat my father at dinner just because I was trying to put on weight. I couldn't, man. Um, so, yeah, just I was my senior year, which I was a young senior. I was actually 17, late November birthday. Uh, so I was actually should have been a junior. If I got held back, I would have been 18 as a senior. But uh, my parents put me in school when I was a 17 year old senior. I was 158 pounds, six foot two or three, whatever it was. So I, I had great abs. That's all about all I had because there you, go. you could see them, you know, through and a fastball and a fastball. And I didn't give a shit. I didn't. Give yeah. a shit. <laughs> I just like I, I had a good arm. Um, my mechanics were even just gang. They look back at just some old pictures and things of how bad some of my mechanics were to work through. I didn't even have a good breaking ball. My so I threw a split finger that was more of my breaking pitch off. Speed you were bit. like Nuke Lelouch out there, breathing bit. through your eyelids. A little bit, but um, <laughs> yeah, I just I just loved it. I loved the feeling of throwing a baseball. Um, 
just like hitters get addicted to the clip in one and that swing where you know you hit it on the sweet spot. Yeah. That's the feeling you chase, right? So the, the opposite was the feeling I chased was just throwing it clean. And I got drafted out of high school by the Yankees in 1994, which was a strike year. But I just, you know, felt that, hey, man, if I was good enough to be on the map, I went to Seton Hall, uh, continued to develop. It was just, I was too young uh, to feel like, uh, I guess, I, when your dad's in a bar business and you see people at the bar mid-afternoon slamming cocktails at 12, 1 o'clock or even earlier than that sometimes, I was like, and watching guys on TV, it just kind of left an image uh, for me that, hey, I want to work real hard because I'd want to be that, the guy on the TV, not the guy at the end of the bar uh, drowning Dude, in the sorrow. That's uh, that was what Yankees were coming up there. I mean, you had Donnie Baseball. Uh, I think Bernie Williams was there. He was young. It was and the Buck Showalter. Was right at the he cusp was the coach. of that dynasty that they had for yes. years. So. It was a strike year, too, though. Remember that? No, no, yeah, that's right. true. That's, yeah, how export. hard was it to you know, How hard was it to turn down that, that opportunity to play professional baseball out of high school? Well, again, man, I was uh, Ralph Macho on the nerdier side of things, uh, not exposed to things. I grew up in a, uh, a tight knit family, and and going to college was the right move to mature a little bit more, um, work a little bit harder, fill out a little bit more. And I said, hey, if if in a strike year, my college scholarship and the offer of the Yankees were offering me about a hundred thousand dollars at the time, it was pretty much an equal equal offer. I said, well, if I'm yeah. Bearing no injuries and I and I do the right things, I'm going to get a shot again. And What's that number today? What's that a hundred thousand dollars? What does that convert over to today? You think a million? Yeah, I don't know. It, yeah. it, right. it wound up being a better signing bonus, being a fourth pick in the country, so it was the right option. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, I get was it. Really which hard. is interesting. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I worked real hard. I had a great rabbit in front of me. I had Matt Morris, who was a all star pitcher with the the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, he took me under his wing. Nice. I laid the footsteps, and I just I just watched everything that guy did, and I did that and some. Uh, as he left and got drafted, I saw what he did. I'm like, well, shoot, there's that's why I stayed at Seton Hall, close to home. My parents could see me play. I had other opportunities to go to bigger baseball programs, but I said, you know, I tell these kids, go where you're gonna play, and yeah. Seton Hall, they, they, like they wanted me there so bad and told me they're going to give me a full ride. And then I was coming in the freshman year to pitch. And I said, well, that's all I wanted. I wanted to keep getting my repetitions, right? Cause I can't get drafted as a freshman. Couldn't get drafted as a sophomore. Um, yeah, I got drafted out of high school, but all these people have all this anxiety of what to do and prepare. And to me, it was like, I just need to get as many repetitions as possible. If you're sitting on the bench and you're not doing anything, and you want to get that playing time, go on a lesser of maybe where you think you you know, should be. Sometimes that stinks. I mean, I played on teams that we were terrible. And, yeah, I wanted to be on a championship team. Um, but sometimes you have to lose to appreciate winning. Sometimes you have to get your ass beat, which I did. I was a freshman All-American at Seton Hall. I thought I was, you know, doing great. And I'm like, wow, I, I, I didn't realize maybe – it's weird to say that you don't realize how good you are, how maybe where your talent sits. Uh, I won all these awards and I was like top in the country for ERA in, in division one. And then I went to the Cape Cod league for a slice of big humble pie. <laughs> where I'm facing all these highly touted guys from, you know, you name it, UCLA, Texas A&M, some of these big schools uh, and got my, you know what, pushed in, man. And it was like, I went from a one eight to a ten eight, literally in my freshman year. Oh, wow! So it was a it was a it was a eye opening experience, but it made me want to work harder. And sometimes when you get pushed down, I think that's what kids need to realize. Like just because you had a bad year, yeah, you know that's that. Let alone if a coach sees you have the talent, and you have the drive, and you're working hard. Sometimes you can do everything right and still have failure. And this is a failure based sport, guys. I think failure is good. Right. That's why I chose pitching. I chose the bright percentages being on this right side of 70, 80 yeah. percent rather than now. I mean, shoot, you can hit a face guys hitting a buck 82. You know, you're getting into the 85 to 90 percentile when you're facing some of these guys in the big leagues or wherever because the game has changed. 
Um, but yeah, I, you know, I just was working my way through it. Uh, was just just how I kept doing it. And I kept developing even as a big leaguer, fighting through injuries, overcoming that, going from a starter to a middle reliever to a setup guy to a closer. I did everything to to modify and shift. So it was always a mindset, you know. There's always a mindset in there and a drive that I don't know. You know, this is good stuff because I just saw a quote somewhere like a week ago and it yeah. said success is you standing on the pile of all your mistakes and failures wow it's very deep it, yeah, true it's, though makes makes a lot I mean, of sense look though. look at jay yeah i mean he was riddled with injuries through his entire career it wasn't yeah. until he was 36 years old when he made the all-star game right um you know he battled all the way through it embrace failure right grill but also Embrace it in a positive sense that you're going to be making the change yeah. and wanting to get better. Yeah. Not just say, oh, I'm embracing failure. I stay. Oh, man. Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Kobe Bryant will tell you a story. Michael Jordan, you hear these other superb athletes that we idolize. And Kobe Bryant said he didn't score one basket when he first started at some one of his first basketball camps. I mean, every guy will tell you, no matter, they, you know, we get. When you reach some pinnacle of type success, you know, you're all star, you're a World Series champ, whatever. There's so much failure in there that people don't know or don't talk about. And that's part of the like you're saying to that quote. Part of that success is can you overcome that? Can you handle that adversity? Can you shake it off? And it's hard. Believe me, it's hard. It's it's when you let your team down or you let a city down as a professional, that's hard to take because you constantly have a microphone after the game. Hey, why'd you make that pitch? What does it yeah. feel like to give up that tank of a home run that went out of the stadium? It's embarrassing, and, and you're exposed to all that to relive those bad moments. And as a pitcher, if you only made you only made a highlight reel if you did one or two, well, I guess three things. If you got in a brawl, would be the third. Yep. <laughs> I, everybody wants to see the, the pitcher and the, the hitter facing each other, on, uh, squaring off on that mound visit. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, doing – uh, striking out the side or giving up a, a home run, you know, yeah. and uh, the failures, man, is it's 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 getting yourself ready for the next day, dusting yourself off because baseball is every day; it's an everyday sport. But you can apply that to anything, you know. When you're practicing stuff, it's fun to do the things that you're good at. It's fun because you you've you've done it. And I heard a great quote: uh, "Amateurs do it until they get it right." professionals do it until they can't get it wrong. Mm. Okay. So that just means, man, putting in those man hours, putting in those 10,000 hours and then putting another 10 on top of that, you know, again, go, go look at all these interviews. You talk about the tools that these kids have just YouTube alone. I mean, there's a lot of information figured out baseball. Yeah. A guy I met at one of the conferences, people are trying to get this information out there. There's so much data, so much information. It's like streamline a routine that will make you better. And that's hard to do because uh, I think everybody's just going like, man, you can be exposed to so much, but expose yeah. yourself first and realize what you're good at and what you're not. What do you think the biggest change for you was? Because obviously, you know, being drafted out of high school, you already, it was known to obviously professional scouts and, and major colleges, like you mentioned, that you had talent. But then going through college, when you ended up getting drafted out of college, you're the fourth overall pick. What do you think was the difference from when you went into college versus when you came out of college and, you know, obviously bumping your draft stock that much? To be honest with you, it was like when you get your shot, like some of these musicians, we have TV shows that showcase, you know, talented musicians that, the you know, the voice, the chair spins yeah. around or you know, Simon Cowell giving you the, the buzzer and all that stuff. That's what that exposure is. They want that one shot, right? I felt like every time I saw all these scouts with radar guns and their notepads, I was like, I'm showing off today. I'm showing up. I've showed up. My pregame, my preparation, my mental preparation and everything that I did, it's like studying for the test. If I didn't study for the test, oh, sh shoot, the scouts are here today. If you have that feeling you clam up, it's because you didn't prepare right. You weren't ready. Mm -hmm. You weren't yeah. ready. Yeah. If you're ready and confidence is really everything in any sport or anything you do in business meetings, 
in, in how you handle yourself, confidence to ask out that person you want to go hang out with on a date. Confidence is preparing and putting yourself in a successful position. I know I did that and I knew that I just kept, you know, seeing that what I was doing in my routine was working. Um, and being a student athlete at Seton Hall, that's a big deal. Any kid that's in a student athlete situation, it's a full-time gig. I tell my son all the time, I said, you want to do that? And he's got sites on big, big name universities like we all do. You know, he's, he's yeah. living the dream. I told my dad, dad, I'm going to be a first round draft pick. I'm going to play D- D1 school baseball and I'm going to be a first round draft pick. I had that talk after playing burnout catch with my dad one day. And my dad, who signed for a Snickers bar, he was a non-drafted free agent at a Gannon University. And he looked like, you know, I would buddy. sign for a Snickers bar. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'd probably, I'd probably sign. I would sign for well at Snickers bar. I'm allergic to nuts, so a Snickers bar would put me in the grave. So I think it'd have to be like a Twix bar or something. But anyway, but that's that's like good. the difference is like having that confidence. My dad even looked at me. My own father was like, "Wow, do you know what you have to do?" I was like, "Yeah, I want it that bad. I want to yeah. be in that position." And there was nothing getting in my way. You know, I was a goody two shoes. I was a little bit of a nerd. I made sure my grades were. I was just locked in. I tell my kids. You got a test, you got a math test. Those are problems. Those are solute. You got to try to find solutions. You might have to apply that in. If you get your mindset right for this, this test or, you know, doing the homework, even, Hey, there's going to be a problem on the baseball field. It's first and third one out. Yeah. How you got this so- yeah. solution? What's the solution? Yeah. So that's what I said. I said, your mindset could be applied to anything. And that's how I treated it. I treated it. Everything as a game. I tried your to make solution. It- Jay. Hi, chatter. Hi, Chi. But no, <laughs> slides that cheese. I, I learned that. No, it's, it's a true story. I You know, just because I became a veteran, I was older. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's guys with more talent that come in underneath you. And when I was with the Tigers, Joel Zamaya, you talk about a flamethrower. Oh, yeah. This kid was throwing 102 to 104 miles an hour. I mean, the ball was in the mid. He was embarrassing, you know, Jeter and A-Rod. He, he was, it was ungodly. But one thing I did, he was my throwing partner besides breaking in my gloves. <laughs> Forget the microwave. I didn't need it with him. Uh, Joel Zamaya had an unbelievable slide step. And putting a slide step with 100 plus miles an hour, oh, he okay. embarrassed people. I mean, they were swinging. Big league hitters, Hall of Fame guys, were swinging when the ball was in the mid already. Okay. And so I go, I know I'm not going to throw. I never touched 100. I hit 99. Uh, when I was with the Tigers, I, and I put that, I, I credit that to playing catch with Joe Zamaya. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a whole funny story. But I, I picked up things from different guys. Jeremy Bonderman had a great slider, and I had to change from throwing on 12 6. I, could, I, I asked questions. I continued yeah. to develop. And that's why I said if you don't ask questions, you're embarrassed, you're too prideful to say, hey, I suck at this. You're good at this. If somebody keys in and gives you that tip, Pay attention. Ask the question. You know, go get that lesson. Go, go get that tutelage because success comes also from being vulnerable. You know, people think, oh, I'm I'm weak. I'm too scared. No. Actually, being vulnerable is a very strong position because you can admit you need help or asking help. And I think that's a man thing, the alpha male thing, especially in the clubhouse. You know, everybody's afraid to say, hey, I need to do this or can you help me with that? It's, it's a vulnerable thing because you're supposed to be, I'm ready, I'm game ready. Yeah, you expect your teammate to be ready. Collectively, we're team practicing. But, hey, man, are you doing some stuff individually to make our team better? You know, because that pregame is, is, is the most important thing to be in game, you know, take the test, play the game, do your thing, jam on it. The, the post game, it should be when your coach is ripping into you. You can't coach during the game. The post game, you should be ripping. Or your teammate, you know, you saw that Bengals player ripping. Mm-hmm. You know, like, hey, man, you know better not to yeah. hit. You know, so it was like in that moment. But, again, I felt bad for that guy because he felt like he blew the game for him. He just gave him another chance uh, in the game quicker maybe. But those types of things is like being accountable to your teammate. When you let your team down, it sucks. It's the worst feeling in the world. When you let your city down, the team you represent on the front of your jersey, that sucks even worse. And then having to answer the media, like, hey, but then look at yourself in the mirror Truthfully, when you're brushing your teeth, you're lying to yourself. If you know, you already know the answer. 
you know when you're you know being a puss you know when you're you're, you're you know wussing out and 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 being a little bit less uh accountable you know to yourself so that's why i always say kids you need to expose yourself to yourself you brought up an interesting point too when you were talking about asking for and like all the stuff that you developed whether it's um you know uh developing that slider or you know uh the slide step because you're in a clubhouse with you know the best players on the planet so why wouldn't you right seek out that information yeah well i used to sit even with hitters uh gary sheffield who became a teammate my agent and a friend of mine still to this day i would sit over there and my in the corner, he was talking to Marcus Staines and Curtis Granderson. He had a whole group of guys, and he's sitting there standing up talking, talking, hitting. Grandy. One of the most feared hitters. Everybody still says, like, look at him with the way he's waving it like a wiffle ball bat. He wanted to eat you for breakfast. Even he would take a foul ball and make you look like, oh, my God, I can't go in there again. He did that on purpose. Uh, but I would sit there, and i go, he'd look at me, he goes, what are you doing here? I said, I'm just listening, man. Is it okay? He's like, yeah, I've never had a pitcher want to sit on a hitter's talk. I go, well, I want to know what you're thinking. I got to hear what mm-hmm. you're thinking because I got to get it. So I was always kind of like listening, but not listening and trying to be like, am I allowed in this? Yeah, right. Station, right? Uh, which I later faced. It's such a simple concept. Yeah. Well, but actually know, I mean, thinking about it, then going to do it. Like I'm almost, I'm sure they appreciated that too because you're making the effort to make yourself better, which in turn is going to obviously help the team success, which is what everybody wants. Yeah, so. so you know, you always got to be learning, and that's what I mean by being vulnerable. Is you know having a pride like, oh, I'm not going to hang out with him, or I'm not going to ask that question. Yeah. I asked a question. That you're talking about my. Here's my true, my one of my biggest, um, proudest things I did was I came up during the steroid era. And then again, if you saw pictures of me throughout my career, my steroid became having to go to a gym. I had no idea how to lift weights. I was intimidated by the weight room. Actually, when even when I was uh, drafted, they didn't even encourage us to lift. My wow. first, my first spring training, they they locked, they had to lock the door. We had a four, one of those four station Nautilus machines. It was like a pull down. Yeah. Uh, Whatever that little unit was, right? That you wanted in your basement back in the late '80s, early '90s. You thought that was awesome if you had that little bench press, the pull down machine. It was like four or five exercises you could do. We had one in Scottsdale, Arizona, and they wound up locking it. They discouraged lifting weights. That's when everything started changing. I started seeing guys getting bigger. I'm like, what is going on? You know? And it was steroids. That was everybody knows. That's no secret. And I was intimidated by that. So what I did was vulnerable. I went to the weight room downtown, true story. I went to this gym that was owned by an American gladiator. Uh, what was the woman with the big, long blonde hair? Ice, I think her name was. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. This might be a little before my, I don't know. No, no, I grew yeah. up with American yeah. gladiator. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. No, 89. I'm sorry, you kids don't know what American Stay gladiator 89. <laughs> uh, She owned this gym downtown, and I saw this this this, this black gentleman who was, Looking at me, he's watching anything I did. I, he's like, and I was with the Florida Marlins at the time. He goes, do you know what you're doing? I was like, not really. He goes, you want to <laughs> I was like, well, what is it you do? He's like, I train people. And he looked at I mean, his physique, everything. He looked exactly like he knew. I was like, all right. He goes, we'll be here tomorrow at whatever time. I was like, cool. Dude, this guy's one of my best friends ever in the planet. Um, oh, that's yeah, awesome. Randy Hadley, uh, you could you know turn around in that book. You could find a picture of him in the center of that just my game book but randy uh was my secret sauce and he made me avoid he got me better from injuries that i shouldn't have come back from he was a dear friend put invested so much time into me to combat and and i was running circles around guys that were taking some shortcuts because i i mentally had to be ready my pregame you know i took two or three weeks off that's it uh in the off season when i was a pro because I was skinny. I knew I needed to get bigger, but I had to be vulnerable to, I don't know the weight room. I don't want to know this. Just put me on cruise control. I was like, I just wanted somebody to take over that part of figuring it out. Like, hey, mm-hmm. that's like saying, I, I'm into wine now. I don't know everything about wine, but I know some sommeliers that do. And I'm asking them questions and I'm learning a little bit of tidbits here and there. It's, it's developing enough to be dangerous. And uh, I could bring up another good quote is like what's the jack of all trades 
you know, it's something about the jack of all trades, but read the full quote. And again, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here because we're live. Look up that quote real quick. It's about, it says, the jack of all trades is a master, master of, of none. Yeah. But read the rest of it. People don't, people cut that off. Read the rest of that quote. I don't have it. I didn't bring it up, but I will. Is it the jack yep. of all trades is a the jack of all trades? Yep. Is a master of none. Let's see. Read the whole thing. The jack of all trades, master of none, is a figure of speech. Oh, no, that's the, what's the full, here it is. Jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. Look at that. So it's never enough. finished that. Shakespeare. Yeah. So Shakespeare's a good man. Out. Forrest Gump, I always say to people, they're like, what do you do now after retirement? I go, I'm just trying to be Forrest Gump. They're like, what do you mean? I go, I'm, I got to do baseball great for as long as it, God let me borrow it. Now I'm trying to be great at all these other things because I go, I wasn't, I was exposed to them, you know, the guitar, um, you know, wine, top 100 sports, amateur stuff with all this, this metrics testing. Everything that I'm into, marketing, I, I'm doing stuff with a guy, friend of mine, Media Twist. Uh, I'm just, I love to know a lot about a lot of things and, and be around tens. I want to be, a, I, don't, I would rather be a six or seven in the room and be around tens because you always have something to chase and yeah. someone to level you up, elevate. That's them, right. You know, and, it, it, and, and how do you get better? By exposing yourself to people who are better than you. Right, because it will motivate you, yeah. yeah, and and you 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 keep doing that. It's gonna it's gonna happen eventually, and it's just experience. The 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 reason why people go, well, how'd you get so good? It took a long time. It was it what didn't happen overnight. Success doesn't happen overnight. Chase success. The money chases you. It's that's I don't chase money. Money's chasing me. Why? Because I want to be in the front of it to get successful. Yeah. Right? I don't chase success. It's so much more, uh, so much more you get out of that being around people that know more than you or people that can add more value to you, you know? And, yeah, and having the discipline to follow through on that, right? That one, that quote that you said about, uh, you know, how there's always something to keep chasing, this, is, this might be, and I don't know if you, I, I did some, before we started this podcast, I did obviously, you know, did some research on, on you and I found a picture of you and Matthew McConaughey. Oh. I wonder, did you? Because that he said a quote like that in his Oscar acceptance speech. Did he get that from you? That, no. That quote. Oh, I was gonna say. Imagine. He's a, cool, he's a cool dude, man. He walked in the cut, and I said, "Who's gonna make?" We had a bet that day. Cole Hamels was in there. I'm trying to remember who else was in the weight room. He walked in, and uh, we were like, "Who's gonna make him say all right, all right, all right?" <laughs> I won that bet. I got him to do it. So it was pretty funny. I was on one of these machines, and it was one of those shake machines. You know, get you all loose. And I said something kind of risque, perverted, whatever. Standard. Go figure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just clubhouse talk. And then I turned to him, and he goes, well, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Good dude. But, you know, it, it's amazing when, you know, my, I've had – I've got to meet Mike Tyson, all these people coming in band, wow. because Black Crows, you know, on stage with Eddie Vedder. Thanks, Sean Casey, for that one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, why, you know, I just met Guy Fieri through a friend. We had oh, Vlad yeah. from Dick Sporting Goods. I had Case, uh, I had uh, the boys there, Jerry and Jeff. That sounded amazing. You know, how do I make, how am I meeting these people? I don't know. I just, I think just by, People call it manifestation or whatever. I just, I'm, 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 I'm talking to two people that can elevate me and the yeah. people that know and not trying to take anything from them. I just said, teach me. Being vulnerable yeah. to the people who, you know, everybody wants to talk about themselves. Everybody wants to share. They should want to share. Hey, look about my career. Look at, look at this. Look how to do this, kid. You know, you should do it this way. I tell kids, try it this way. This is the way I did it, but it doesn't mean it's the only way. work for you. You've yeah. got to find the way and the person that can teach you the lesson that, that applies to how you play your game. That's the, that's the name of my book, Just My Game. It was just the way I did it. It's yeah. not the only way to do it. Do just your game or just your thing. You know, just the way you lift and just the way you talk. And I, mean, I always say, I love Justin's hair. I'm a, I'm a hair guy. 
and Justin's always locked in with the hair, right? I'm but always he's, locked. He's his way, man. He's That's a good shout out in. to Tresemme yeah. uh, <laughs> and all their products <laughs> that you can purchase at Wegmans or Shout Whichever. out upstate New York, central yeah. New York. That's you right. got it. It's so a, that's a good plug, Grill. Left shoulder, behind the left shoulder of case is the Just My Game book. Still available for purchase, I believe, on Amazon. Uh, it's yeah, still there. Times uh, bestseller. It wasn't even meant to be a book. Uh, it says it in there. I, I wrote a journal for my kids. Yeah. Thought my career was over. And uh, It's an I, easy read. It's a good read Yeah. Uh, for anyone that easy wants to do that. Read. I had to scrape a lot out of there, of course. Yeah. If I wrote the, uh, the real version, it might be a best. <laughs> I don't know. Well, let's make that real version <laughs> for this podcast. That's right. We'll end That's this first episode. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, great stuff. Just a, a little tidbit for everyone out there. For this podcast, Grill is going to be bringing on some other special guests that he's known throughout his entire career. We'll be working on those things. So we're going to learn more and the insights, the backstories, and just a lot of the things that he's done throughout his career. Yeah. So Grill... We're excited to have you on this thing. It's the retooling of the mountain visit, and uh, we're excited. We'll have some affiliates on here, some players that have gone through a top under sports evaluation. Again, this is not, we cannot provide this without two companies, Champions Events. Go to championsevents.com for any tournaments you're looking to, to play in up at historic Legends Fields in Oswego, New York, and also top 100 sports, the evaluation software for your organization athletes and parents, the best way to track your progress and look to use it as a resource to get placed at the next level. So say one last thing though, we do have some archives of mountain visits back. You know, there's some good nuggets in there. So if you can find those, dig those out, there were some good nuggets in those old, this is, this is the upgraded version of mountain visit. We're, We're going, we're going next level with some stuff, but there's some good nuggets on our old our old mound visits too, you know. We may Absolutely. have to some of that topics back. There we go. And 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 if there's anybody that that you guys out there who are listening want to maybe you know want to get on the want to see us interview on the podcast or maybe um, we, you know we could do our best to to do that. And and obviously you know uh, Jason's got you know whether it's former players or, or coaches and stuff. I I feel like. Uh, I mean, he's told us he's got a wide, a wide cast a wide net in terms of people that uh, that we'd love to talk to. So, um, so if you've got any suggestions, in? we have a call in thing. We, or? we, we, can, we can have a absolutely. call. Absolutely, yeah. check in question, Jim, on the side. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. If you guys have any questions you want us to to ask involved. Jason, let's do it. Get absolutely. The wine and eggs, some nachos, whatever. Oh yeah. Bring so make sure you uh, subscribe yeah. to the channel, Top of Sports Network. TikTok, yep. TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Top 100 Sports Net. That's Top 100 Sports N E T. For more uh, or less of us, whatever you want to see. Uh, but yeah, you'll you'll be able to find all that little clips from the podcast, some special stuff that we do along the side. So a lot of great stuff happening here. Grill, you want to close us out? Yeah, I don't want people to just eavesdrop on this thing. I, I want them to participate, to pull up a seat. Join sure, in. Sure. It's more fun. Like I said, if I if Gary Sheffield let me in on a conversation, I want people to get something out of this and just hear rather than just hear us talk. Because I know when people just talk, sometimes you tune out. But when you're involved in the conversation, you know, kids, parents, coaches, moms even, join the conversation. I know there's some single moms out there trying to how do I get in touch, you know, with my son. If you both like baseball, you both like sports, you're just supposed to grow helping your kid get better. Uh, some confidence, join the conversation. Um, this is a forum I hope that encapsulates all of that stuff. It's it's sports. Yeah. Sports does a lot for kids, and I think we need more of that. Come especially coming out of this COVID crap. Uh, let's get let's get let's get back to it. I mean, I I wish we could close out with "Hot for Teacher" by Van Halen. I got my son. We I got my son. It. Let's do that because my son with the drums in the beginning of that song. We, I tried the past two days. I got him fired up to go to class. All and right, Molly, you're so hot for teacher. That's our closeout song. That'll play us out. Hope you enjoy. Awesome, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week on Wednesday. All right, man. Bye.